right, hi Zoe. Let's go ahead and take a look at problem number six first. The problem that we're given is x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 8y equals 144. And what we're asked to find is the diameter of this circle. One of the things that I'd like to point out right here at the top is that x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared is the generic equation of a circle where hk is the center of the circle and r is the radius. One of the things that we can do, because again, the PSAT isn't necessarily about methodically and meticulously going through the whole process to get the right answer, unless you have time left over at the end. For a lot of these problems, what we're trying to do, of course, is to make an educated guess quickly and then potentially return to a problem like this if we have extra time at the end to see if we can confirm our educated guess. In this case, since the equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, which check the geometric information that you have at the beginning of the section. This may be one of the pieces of information that's been given to you. If it hasn't been given to you, this is one of the pieces of information you should write on a note card so that you can memorize it. But a decent guess here since the equation of a circle is equal to the radius squared, and 144 is a perfect square, namely this is 12 squared, a decent guess for the diameter, remember the diameter equals twice the radius, and so a decent guess is 24. This is a decent guess. Now, we can return to confirm this if we have more time at the end of the test, let's assume that we do have more time and we want to confirm whether this guess is correct. And sometimes it's going to be and sometimes it's not, but at least we can feel confident that we've made a decent educated guess. It's not going to come up correct 100% of the time, but sometimes it will. All right, the first thing that I'm going to do here if we're going to confirm our answer or, you know, disprove it algebraically, is we need to reorganize this equation into this standard format for the equation of a circle, which means we're going to want to clump the x's and y's together. And we're going to want to put reorganize this information and reorganize it into parentheses. So we're going to have x squared minus 6x, and we're going to have y squared plus 8y. But you can see here that if we just do this, we haven't gotten to the standard form. The other thing to notice is that I've left a blank spot here. That's because the method that we are going to use in this particular case is called completing the square. The reason we need to complete the square is because we're going to need to factor this or reverse FOIL it to match this format of x minus h squared. The way that we do that is we divide this by 2. And square it. So negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. We have completed the square. But if we add 9 on this side of the equation, what do we have to do to keep everything in balance? We have to add 9 to this side of the equation as well. We're going to do the same thing again on this side. 
we are going to divide 8 by 2, which is 4, and then square it. And so this is going to be 4 squared, which is plus 16. And if we add 16 on this side of the equation, we have to add it on this side of the equation. We can see now why the reason that we've done this, we can now remember when we are factoring an expression like this, we're looking for the numbers that multiply together to 9 and add together to negative 6. Well, we know what that is. It's minus 3. So we can rewrite that as x, oops, sorry, not x squared, as x minus 3 times x minus 3. And here also we know what multiplies together to 16 and adds together to 8? 4. The same 4 that we solved for by dividing this 8 in 2. And so this is going to be y plus 4 times y plus 4. But of course, if we factor it like this, the other way to write x minus 3 times x minus 3 is x minus 3 squared. And the other way to write y plus 4 times y plus 4 is y plus 4 squared. And now we can add 144 plus 9 plus 16. This is 169. And so we can see here the square root of 169 is 13. So r is going to be equal to the square root of 169, which is 13. And the diameter, which is 2r, is going to be 26. So this is actually the correct answer. Doing this, however, has also taught us something important, which is if we're given an equation like this and we know we're going to have to complete the square, we know that the radius, because we're going to have to add stuff, the radius is going to be bigger than whatever this number is here. In fact, in this case, instead of 12, it's 13, and therefore then the diameter instead of 24 is 26. So next time we have a problem like this and we're making an educated guess, if the exam is asking us to find the radius or the diameter of a circle, based on the equation of a circle, and we're given it in a format where we have to complete the square, we're going to want to guess something that's a little bigger than what we get if we just take the square root of whatever the original equation is equal to, in this case 144. So in this case, the diameter of the circle given by this equation is going to be 26. I hope this helps.